right, to Daniel, start. take it away, sir. Thanks, Ron. Um, just to, I figured since we're recording, I'll just do a quick intro for those who don't know me um, and how I got into this. I've been messing around with X lights for probably six or seven years now, but I didn't actually start my first pixel display till 2020. And like all of us here, I quickly got the bug for it and uh, started off with three, 4,000 lights. And this year's over 18,000. And, and of course, adding the four moving heads. Uh, I got into sequencing last year as well, just in my off time. I've, find it interesting and fun. So I put out a couple of free sequences for everyone, which was Lion King and um, Squid Games was the other one. And then this year I quickly discovered how different moving heads were. Uh, I was actually hoping Swiper or someone else would do the moving heads for the excess sequences, but quickly realised it wasn't going to happen. So I thought, why not give it a crack? And I put together a moving head sequence and then sent it to Ron and said, here you go, see what you think and put it out to everyone. And it seems to have got a, a lot of good feedback. So in my own time, I just volunteer to do this. Um, I work full time, but in my off time and I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV, I just grab out the X lights and uh, do some sequences and get some of these moving heads going for everyone. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's, you know, we're September now, so I've got a lot to build. I've got the G props that have just turned up and pixels to push and stuff to mount. So I'll probably only get another one or two out, but I'll, I'll do my best to get some Christmas ones out for you guys. Jeff's been hassling me at the moment to do one of the TSO ones. So I should have that out next week. Probably takes me anywhere between 10 hours and 50 hours to do the moving heads. Um, with the pixels, you're obviously just got one dimension, but the moving heads, you're dealing with three dimensions. So it does take a little bit finessing, but it's actually not too hard to sequence. Um, I've only been messing around with moving heads for probably six months, maybe even less. So I'm definitely not an expert by any means or a professional sequencer or anything like that. Uh, so any feedback you guys have, I, I certainly encourage. Uh, I'd love to see videos of them working so I can get a better feel and appreciation of what they're doing or what I hope them to do. Uh, if what I'm saying is not correct, also let me know because I need the feedback as well. And um, look, this is all open forum today, so just jump in anytime you've got any questions and we can all run through it together. There's a couple of videos. If you're getting into, I don't know how many people here have got moving heads or are about to get them, but if you do, there's certainly some videos that you'll want to watch first. Um, these ones I've probably watched four or five times. Tom Bet George, he was obviously probably the, the starter of moving heads. He's had them on his display for a while and it seems to have cottoned on from there and it's growing quicker and quicker. I think we're going to see lots and lots more displays this year with moving heads. And once those videos start going through the community, I think next year um, moving heads are going to be extremely popular. So uh, the best one to start for is um, you could just go to YouTube and go onto the virtual Christmas uh, site there, the VCS. Uh, I can probably put these in chat later. Um, but I'd highly recommend watching the two videos that Tom did. One was back in 2020 and one was in 2021. And he, he'll go through a full in-depth of how to set up the X-Lights in, in your layout. Sorry, how to set up the moving heads in your X-Lights layout, uh, how to create groups and channels and everything that we have for the extreme layouts now. Uh, and the other one... Uh, is watch swipers. I've watched that over and over. It's a really good video. It gives a nice talk about, you can see his moving heads, how he has them connected, what he's got them connected to, how he goes through the manual, puts them in the layout, some sequencing. Uh, so those ones you definitely want to want to watch and get a really good appreciation of how to correctly set up your layout. Uh, there was an update, I think it was 2020. 2.12 where Scott Hansen added a color wheel. Uh, so I changed the, the excess layout to add the color wheel, which is where some of the sequences you'll see the color. Um, color's always 
been there, but it wasn't visually presentable in the previews, whereas now you can get an idea. However, there is a bug now that I've picked up on and, and reported, uh, and we'll get into that a bit soon, uh, which does affect the colours. The other one just came out maybe a week or two ago, a guy named Justin Leonard. Um, you can go to the, the official x -Lite support group in Facebook, just type in his name, and, and he's got a couple of videos there. One, you can see his moving heads. He's got a couple of different ones there, and he explains how they're connected as well and also how to set them up in, in x uh, So those ones I, I definitely recommend getting into and starting there. Uh, the purpose of today is um, I've been messing around with the moving head. I've had one connected up to, I've just bought a, a Raspberry Pi and a, a Pi hat just to um, mess around. It's easy to portable rather than grabbing out my cult controllers and doing it that way. And um, I'm just talking with a few of you, I can see there's going to be some issues that you're going to run into. You may not think that they're, well, they're not going to be how the extreme preview is, isn't going to match up to yours. So the purpose of this is just to talk about the issues you may run into and, and what you can do about them. Uh, I'm not going to go into creating a moving head in your layout and creating the groups and, and that, because, I mean, we'll spend an hour doing that. I'm happy to do it another time if you guys want, but if you, you go to Tom's videos and Swipers, they've got everything covered there. And when you download an extreme sequence, uh, you'll also have all those groups and stuff as well. Um, th there are different, there's a lot of vendors out there now doing moving heads. Uh, the way they've grouped them can be different. Um, some are putting DMXs on the moving heads themselves and not groups like how they were originally set up for. Everyone's got their own different ways of doing it. Um, it just may mean you're going to have additional remapping of channels with other sequence vendors. And so keep that in mind as well. Um, but as we go through, I'll, I'll point out all these differences and, and we'll get going on it. <clears throat> so just quickly, before I go into much depth, uh, there was, a, as I said, the colour wheel feature was added. It's beautiful. It's nice to see some progress being made in x -Lights, just to help give you guys that visual presentation of what we're trying to achieve with colours. Um, I, I think we were the first ones to actually put out some sequences with this feature. I get the feeling a lot of people don't realise it's there yet. Uh, if I go to a layout, you guys can see this, I take it? Yep. Yep. Um, so if you watch Scott's video, he's going to show you how to set it up in X Lights, and you can see it here, the colour wheel. So normally it was just RGBW, and you'd set your dimmers here. Uh, he added in the colour wheel, and he'll go, if you watch that video, he will go through how to set that up. What it will do is just, it'll bring up palettes that you can associate a value, like an on effect to like a green, it'll give you a green beam. Um, but since I've done those sequences, I have noticed there is a bug and I've, I've reported it on, on the GitHub and, and waiting feedback on that. Um, and soon as we go through the limitations of the moving heads, I'll, I'll point out a couple of things you guys can do either to your own sequences to, to make it better or um, things that we can look at changing in the future, which may be that we just change it back to this one for now, but I'll, I'll explain that all in a bit more detail as we get there. So there's lots of different limitations with the moving heads. Um, there's so many different manufacturers making them now. Unfortunately, the way they make them are all different. So the way they've signed channel numbers are different. The way they're positioned is different. The speeds are different. So this, this is going to mean the setup in, in your x -Lights layout may very well be different to how the extreme layout is uh, or any other vendors for that matter. And as, as a result, the previews of what you're going to see on your display may not match. 
So Moving Heads Art, just a simple plug and play feature where you just simply map another vendor's sequence to yours. You do need an understanding of how the moving head works, how the effects are working in X-Lights, things like value curves. It's not hard at all to do. I mean, I've picked all this up within the six months. Um, it just requires an understanding of an input of what to do, and, and that's the whole reason for this. And, and at any stage, just feel if you get stuck, feel free to reach out to me, and I'm, I'm more than happy to walk on, walk it through you, or jump on a Zoom, and we can do it together. One of the big differences with the moving heads, what is what is known as the home or rest position. So as you can see here, the moving head from the street is to the right. However, all the manufacturers are different. Um, so when you first power it on, it's gonna go through a test and then you'll determine which direction it is facing. Uh, I've seen some going forward, some going backwards, some to the left, some to the right. There's no consistency between the manufacturers and from a sequence point of view, it, uh, it provides quite a few challenges. So unless, unless your moving head is the exact same as the vendors and same positions, you, you're definitely not going to get the exact same effects as what you see on that on the vendors' previews. So what this means is, if yours is facing a, a different direction and the direction is set in the orientation, wrong one. So some may be completely facing this way. I think uh, initially with the, when the first moving heads come out, it was facing to the back. Um, I actually ran a poll. I was curious to know which way everyone's moving heads were facing before I got too in depth with the sequences. I think one said they were to the front, but everyone else was to the right. So I think after one or two sequences, I ended up changing the X-Lights layout, it's now to the right, like the bulk of the people had. Um, my moving heads themselves, they actually face forwards. So what I'm going to do is, is physically rotate the whole unit when I install it on the roof and just position it to the right. So I think a lot of people will be able to do that, but of course it'll depend on how you actually mount the head. The other, other main reason we did it, why I did it to the right was, um, Tom Bet George had his this way, and I'm guessing a lot of people with moving heads have probably already got some of his stuff. Uh, they most likely have also watched his video and, and, and set it up to the right as well. Uh, I've also been encouraging other vendors to do it this way, and that way there's just commonality between everyone. Uh, it would make things for you guys a lot simpler if it was all one way, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. Uh, so we're just going to have to deal with it. This, what you're probably going to have to do is change pan settings mostly. On the odd occasion, you might have to change tilt, um, but I'm going to go into that a bit more with you guys as we go through. Before we get too far into the pan values and rest positions, it, it's really important that you have an understanding of your actual moving head. So the best way to do this is obviously connect one up, jump in X lights, and then you could just go create a new sequence. And it's as simple as just drop a the DMX effect on your moving head and then just mess with the channels. So see which way the, the pan and tilt's going. Um, if it's not going the right direction, if you notice on your moving head, it's not going the same direction as what you're doing in the, the model previews and then you may need to go back to the layout and add like a negative value 
So back here, I had a, a negative value of 540. Um, if you watch Swiper's video, he goes into this in more depth with the negative values. Uh, from what I could pick up, it seems like he had 540 for a while and then perhaps an x lights feature came out and uh, resulted in, in having to change it. So this may be different for everyone. Um, I found that I needed the negative value here, uh, but in the tilt was a, a positive value. Uh, your manual, my manual says the tilt is 270 degrees, but I found it wasn't actually. In real life, it was 225. So this is where it's important and critical that you guys hook up your moving head. Um, you can leave the beams off and lamps off. There's no need for that at this stage. Just go through your pan and tilt and just make sure it is doing what how you have it up and set up in X lights. Because otherwise you're going to have a lot of headaches to do. Um, I wouldn't be changing DMX values and stuff in sequences yet until you've got your moving head head. Um, because it does take time to change. And the last thing you want to do is change it all and then realize your moving head does something completely different and you have to change it back. So I uh, actually create a spreadsheet for myself. Um, so you can see here, I and this is what I'd recommend doing as well, like, Work out what DMX values are going to give you forward and back and left and right, just so you have a quick reference sheet to go off. Um, as you can see, I've done it for tilt as well. So when I'm sequencing and I go, okay, what's 45 degrees and I want it this direction, you can quickly go, okay, it's 80. Um, but, but you should also do the on effects as well. So just drop an on effect onto the, the different groups. Uh, always have it as white and then what you're going to do is just change the values so as you're changing them uh, like I know green on mine is 17 so go, go through each one um, and then just write down what those values are so you know what it's meant to look like so as you can see here I've got the on effects I did it again for pan and tilt because some sequences we, um, vendors will use the on effect to move them. Uh, you can see here the different color values. Another big one is the frost. Um, you might see in some sequences, I use a frost effect. I think this Carol of Bells is a big one. Um, what it's doing is just opening up the moving head to act like a big floodlight. So you just get that impact into the crowd without, without a beam. So you need to know that should be 71, but you need to know what your value is on your moving head. The odds are your, your values are probably going to be the same as mine, but you just want to check that. So you really want to have a good understanding of how your moving head's actually working and, and write down all the different things that it does. It's going to save you a lot of hassle in the, in the long run. The other thing with your moving head is... You want to make sure your channel numbers on your moving head line up with what you have set in X light. So if we go into the visualizer, my moving heads are 16 channels. Uh, so I have them starting on 1, 17, 33, so on. So on the moving head itself, you'll see like a little display. And this gets people, they're like, why is my moving head not working? You need to physically set these channel numbers on your moving head, otherwise they're not going to receive the, the data they need to make the move. Uh, another limitation is of the moving head. That's not good. What's that, sorry? Someone didn't mute, I muted them, Daniel. Oh, okay. Uh, another limitation of the moving head is the speeds. So, as I said, the manufacturers all make them differently. This means the speeds, the physical motors move are different. Uh, so you may find your moving head isn't keeping up with some of the faster pace uh, effects. Uh, so where you change this in X lights,
is the pan slew limit and same again with tilt. So what this is saying is the pan speed limit, the pan motor can move at 120 degrees per second. Some of the more high-end ones, like if you watch Justin's video, he's got one at 170. Um, I, I think the original layout was set to 150. I've actually just changed that back to 120 just to help the guys that do have the slower ones. Uh, like myself included, I noticed it wasn't keeping up. Um, some of the other lights out there are seen are more than capable of doing the 150. Uh, so most probably at least 90% of the sequences, it's not going to affect at all because the duration of that effect is going to be more than capable of doing that time limit. But there are some fast-paced sequences I've got um, where it may not keep up with it. It may, may lag behind. I wouldn't, wouldn't let it get you down and worry about it too much. Uh, no one in your crowd is going to notice. They're, all they're looking for is that flashing of the light and the streak. Uh, you're going to be the only one that knows where it's meant to be. So don't, don't let it stress you out. Um, it's really not worth it for that split second where it may be moving quick or, or bouncing. Um, it, it's really not going to matter and it'll catch up by the next effect anyway where, where it needs to be. Um, if you do find that you really do want to change it more, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. So we will rock use a, a, a typical example of a really quick moving beat. Um, if you find yours isn't keeping up, I mine wasn't. So I actually changed these start and end intensities. So, you know, instead of it being 10 to 15, where it's got a, a wider angle to cover, I just end up changing it to a smaller angle. You can also do the same with a, a, a DMX effect as well. Uh, I, DMX curve values, value curves are used a lot uh, just to help control the speed and direction of the moving head. So you'll, you'll find ramp and ramp up and downs used a lot. So you, you could also use that to create smalling movements as well. So if you see a sequence I've got where it's used a DMX value and you're finding that uh, it's not keeping up um, because the head's moving too great a degree in such a short time, uh, like it may be set to 90 or something like that, the easiest thing to do is just simply go in and, and make them smaller values so that the, the beam light has and the moving head has less distance to travel. Uh, another way you could do is just simply stop the movement of the moving head completely. So have a stationary effect, um, which is very easy to do, and then just put two on effects on. So instead of there being one here, just uh, change it to two on effects in that timeline. So you got so what you what you'd have is like a flash of light going bang bang, bang bang. Uh, so it's not moving, but you get that impact of those lights coming out at you. So there's, there's a couple different ways that you guys can do stuff. Everyone's displays are going to be different. The way that they want them is going to be different. Um, most of the time, you're not going to need to change those things due to lag. But on the rare occasion you do, at least now you have a couple of tools to decide the best way you want to do it. Uh, for me personally, I'd probably just let it run because uh, it's really not going to make a difference. All it is going to be is this isn't going to move the same. It's quick, but you're still going to have that light. Another limitation is one to do with X lights. Um, obviously, it's unable to so show some effects like the frost or prism or prism rotation. So when you guys see a sequence, mostly all you're going to see is just the white beam 
until X lights has the capability to add a bit more in, but I imagine that's going to take quite some time to do. So if you're wondering why your actual display has, uh, it might be a prism going out, but in X lights, it's just going to show a white beam. So that's where it goes back to creating a spreadsheet. So I don't have any prisms on this one, but you just click on the effect, it'll show you a value. Uh, or it could be a frost and you'll see, oh yeah, he's got the frost effect on it. You know, it's meant to be a frost and saves you wondering what it actually is. Um, but unfortunately we can't display what that frost is going to look like next slide. So what, what you guys see when you're checking out the moving heads previews may not be what it's actually doing in real life. Um, there was one we just put out to cut to Carter today. And it's I've added in some prism effects and it's got some rotation in there. So when you're getting some cool beats, it's going to feel like you're in that nightclub and you've got all these beam lights coming out at you. Um, but, but yeah, unfortunately, you're just not going to see that in the X lights. So what options do you have available to overcome these limitations? Uh, The main one you probably you're going to have to do is changing pan effects if your moving head is not the same direction as the vendors. Um, you have a couple of options of if your rest position is not the same, there, there are a couple of options of what you can do. One, one would be just to leave it, let it run. Um, it may mean, for example, our the vendor's beams are meant to be facing forward and yours are coming to the right. Um, a lot of it you're not going to probably notice and certainly a crowd. There will be sometimes, of course, that you will want those beams at front because you're after that impact statement. But um, it really will come down to a personal choice if you do want to, if you're happy just to let that run. And I'll, I'll show you guys an example here. Um, so this one, I've changed the layout to facing forward. And if we just run through, you're going to see there, like, obviously, it's not meant to have been in that direction. But to me, it still looks beautiful. Anyway, it still looks good. And then at some stages, you may just want to change these values to the front. So if, if you don't want to leave it running like that, and there's a lot of sequences I've also changed these values uh, from other vendors because I didn't want it facing that way. Uh, for example, some vendors, um, it may mean their beams are predominantly facing this way because of their rotation. Um, and I've got an airport just out here, so I, I don't want to be shining these lights towards them. So I, I've actually had to be going through and changing all their DMX values and, and whatnot. Um, it is a bit of a pain to have to do it. You know, it might take you an hour to, or two to do, but unfortunately, due to the differences in X lights and the rest positions, there, there is nothing we can do about that. I've been chatting with Scott Hansen, and there, there's a, an update coming out soon, which is 2022.18. Um, they are trying to address this to make it more simpler for you guys. So. Uh, if ours is to the right and someone's is to the front, um, to be able to set up a, a remapping of that to help correct the differences in values. Um, so, I mean, you guys can jump on GitHub anytime and, and follow this through. Uh, and this is a bit of an idea of what he's coming up from, which would be mapping one value to another. Uh, the problem is with moving heads, value curves are used a lot. Um, and that's purely to control the speed of the, the moving head. Um, without it, it's just going to go at whatever speed it can do, uh, whereas you may want it to go slow. Uh, so this is only going to solve a small amount of problems. Um, it, it's obviously very complex to do because of so many different values and moving things to make it done. So I, I don't see this feature um, being upgraded to include value curves anytime soon. 
uh, I'm sure they've got their hands full with plenty of other work that's that's more important. So what that will mean is if you do want it to match what the sequence is doing, you're going to need to go in and change these pan values. You'll probably find you won't need to change tilt, but pan's definitely one that you will need to change. And what I mean by changing the value is you can see here, uh, I think I have these facing more to the front, but because we've changed it in the layout to a different rest position, these are now all out in different spots. So what a good idea maybe to do is create your own spreadsheet. You can just go, oh, yep, so Daniel's is 127 facing forward, mine's 90. Just create an op, like a bit of a spreadsheet, so at least you have a, a quick idea to go, okay, it's front, so it's 90, or whatever it needs to be. Um, and that probably will save you a lot of headaches of having to manually go in and change it each time and wondering what it is. Um, so what's this one? This one's uh, 141, which isn't moving for some reason. We just do a render and see if that fixes it. I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you want it to match up with the extreme layout preview, you are going to have to change all of these pan values. So you'll need to go in and change. You can see here, this is for moving head one, two, three, four. Uh, if you had eight, it'd be further down. Uh, sorry, guys, it's going slow because we're on the Zoom. Uh, the trickiest ones to change are going to be the value curves. And hopefully if this does catch up, I'll be able to show you how to change that. So the best, the best way to do it, well, what I do is, so this one was 141 in a stationary position. And that one, I can tell you, has a value curve. So... What I do is I just mess around with the stationary one first and I, I work out what position it's meant to be. So if it was meant to be, say, 180, I, I have that set at 180. I then go into all the others and set them the same. If it's a value curve, I'll, I'll change it from whatever it was to the 180 as well and that will give you the correct direction it's meant to move. But Going to get out of that one. Let's see if we can get a different one going. So let's go. This one I'm working on for Jim, actually, uh, for Jeff, rather. Let me just find a uh, value curve. Okay, so here's one here. So this is obviously on my layout, so it's in the, the correct position, but let's just say, for example, uh, it needed to be facing another direction to match up. So you just work out what it needs to be doing. So Perhaps the sequence is meant to be coming from the, the rear. So you just use just use the channel and we'll work out, okay, 190 works for that position, or I want it from the front, so 127 works for that position. And go into your value curves. Okay, so on that sequence, you know. To make it move in this certain direction, it used 141.11 and 111. For me to make it work in that direction, for example, I need 70 and you know 128. So all you'd have to do is just go in here and change those values, 128 and 70. Uh, 
there's no easier way to do it, unfortunately. You guys are just going to, if your guys moving heads aren't in that right to, right position for the rest, you're going to have to change these. Um, like I showed you on that Christmas Nat King Cole sequence, a lot of it you may be just happy with. I, I think it looks pretty good. Um, the way that one was coming through, you know, like, okay, they're not coming from this direction, but they look great from that direction. So then you might just find, okay, well, let's just find which pan values he has at the front because they're probably the ones that you want to change. So you're going to go into one that's at the front and you're going to go, okay, he's got 111, 123, 132. Let's look at look at the spreadsheet. Okay, so 127 is facing forward. My one, my facing forward is 90. So let's just go and add, you know, 10 degrees this way, 5 degrees that way. So you're going to have, um, you might have 70, you might 80, I'd have uh, 110 example, you know, just for an example. After a while, after one or two sequences that you're changing these, you're going to get a really quick understanding of where they're meant to be in correlation to where yours are. So it is going to be painful at first. Um, I've had to do it with other people's sequences as well. Um, and that's how I've learned. Um, some I, I'm just going to leave run how they are. Others I will change to make it look more differently. It's really going to come down to that personal decision at the end of the day of what you want. Uh, most of the effects, unless it's one that I find that's just coming straight out at you because you're after that impact statement, most of them may be just to the left or right. And at the end of the day, it's it's not going to matter. Like, Don't get too focused on moving heads. Um, they're really just an impact feature to add in. They really shouldn't be taking over your show. I'm definitely not going to be using them in every sequence I play on my show because I think it'll take too much away. For me, I think the mega tree is probably one feature that should be highlighted more. So don't lose focus on your show and, and don't let it get to you. If it's not doing what, what you expect it to, to do on someone else's layout, don't let that get to you. Like, your your crowd, they're just going to be dazzled by seeing these lights go around and, and be blown away. And, you know, when you've got 5,000, 10,000 other lights sparkling away and these other lights are just flashing on here and there, they're, they're not going to care. So it's really, at the end of the day, it's just you that are going to notice. I'd probably just be more inclined to change the ones that face forward because usually I put those for a reason, like there's just a nice big bang and I want it to come straight out at the crowd and, you know, have these beams going over their heads. Well, they're going to be the easiest ones to change because you're going to go, okay, we know Daniel's straight ahead's 127, mine's uh, 90, so you're just going to bulk update and, and do 90 and, and just have those ones when you need to. So... You can you can get yourselves a beautiful sequence with as least amount of hassle if you want. Uh, if you are pedantic and you're like, no, he has it this way, I want it that way too. You are going to have to go and change these values. Uh, it's just until X lights can come up with something to help with that. There, there's just nothing anyone can do about it. But we're we're all pushing into. But you know, it's end of the year already. These guys have their own shows to get up and running. It's a massive job and it's not something I think will come out in, in the near future other than the one Scott's bringing out soon. And what I, I don't have the specifics other than what was on the GitHub, but what I'm assuming this may do is anything that has a non-value curve. So that one we saw before, this is a value curve, anything with a non-value curve, so it's just got a straight number. I think what you're going to find is you're just going to remap the numbers. So if my straight ahead's 127 and yours is 60, I get the feeling it will automatically set something up in here where it'll be, okay, we're going to map from 127 to 60. Um, so that will probably help quite a bit. Um, but as you guys will see in many other sequences, 
it, it's not going to help with value curves and value curves are going to be a, a big thing. Um, it just, I, I can just do these single non-value curves on pan and tilts if you guys like, but it's not going to get the same smoothness that the moving head needs. It, it's going to make it snap to positions quicker. Um, so I do prefer to use the, move, uh, the value curves. So I, I mentioned before about the color wheel bug in X lights. Uh, if we go to one with a color, yep, Carol of the Bells one here. So you can see I've got blues. If, if you guys see red in there as well, um, it's going to be a dead giveaway that it's a frost effect because a red light's just not really going to show up through the sky. Um, you can see here, here's a frost. So the impact I'm trying to make to your audience is uh, a big floodlight just bang, 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 you know, coming out at, at you without having the beams right in their face. Um, so kind of like you're in a, in a club type thing and it's you know, the music's banging along. Uh, so the issue is with the color wheel feature um, to get these colors on the preview, you need to put them on these moving heads, whereas previously you put them on, on a group. Now, inside your moving head is a color wheel. It's going to spin around to, to get to that color. So unless it's the first color is blue, it may go through different colors and it's going to flash. So these, these ones where it's just a short duration, um, you're probably going to see more of a, a white flash than anything. Uh, it can easily, you can overcome that. And here will lie in the problem. So the best and easiest way to do it would be just to drop an on effect onto the color wheel change it to the value, um, that's blue, that's 40. And what I've done is I've obviously changed, I've set that on effect to come on before these come on and it can stop at the end, but I've set it to come on. And what, what, it's, what I'm doing to that is setting the wheel to that blue position. So when it hits here, you're not going to get that flash. You're going to get that blue. Um, you can see here it's not going to show. Well, it's not going to show up here. But the main issue I have Um, it's actually not going to do it. And that's probably because I need to render it to get this effect on, um, which I don't want to do because the last one just froze up. So if I put this color effect on, what it would do is if I refreshed it, re-rendered, it's going to put all the beam lights on. So even though they're not physically on, on your moving head, in the preview itself, it's going to look like the lights are all on and it just looks like a mess. Um, you will see it when it needs to move and it will move how it needs to move. You can rest assured it is not, um, those beams are not on. Um, I just haven't, you, you guys with X lights and, and the moving heads can just do this yourself. Just put an on effect over the duration and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. But these lights are all, all the beams are going to be on the whole time. Um, so we can overcome it by a few things. I can just put this blue or whatever color it needs to be on here. Reason I didn't want to do that is when, I, when you guys see the previews, it's going to look terrible because all you're going to just see are all these lights on and just some movements, and it, it just looks absolutely crap. Um, the other thing you could just do is 
forget the colors. Go highlight them all, bulk update, and let them be white. Um, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, a, a white's just going to be as good. I just kind of like the color in there to give it a little bit different during sequences and just give you guys a, a little bit of extra something and a little bit of color into your show. Um, the only other way I could do this is we go and completely remove the, the wheel. So we just go back to the RGB color wheel, get rid of all those ones. Um, and and what it means is I can just put the colors up here like normal. It'll work like it used to work. You're just not going to get the preview of blue. So, which is which is the whole point of this color wheel effect. It's purely so you guys can see in the preview what it's meant to be doing. You can see, oh yeah, it's going to be blue. It's going to be green. Perfect. So. It's it's up to you guys what you think is best. Um, I'm probably until they sort the bug out. I'm probably more leaning towards adding the color up here, um, just like just like it used to be. Until they can fix the bug. Um, as long as you guys are happy that you're not going to see any colors in the preview, it's just going to be white. But at least it will work. Um, but for now, you guys. Some of you probably even haven't added the color wheel onto your layout. If that's if that's the case, then just go up and um, put a blue color on here, and and your moving head will put, and get it your moving head to switch to that that color before the effect starts. Uh, for those of you that have the color wheel, and yeah, I'm I'm either just going to change mine to white, uh, or I'll add the color here and, and just let the preview be wrong like it's always going to show the beams but I know what it's meant to look like and I know the color will come through in the show anyway so a couple different options there but I'm sure this is going to come out when everyone is running sequences and using the actual moving heads unfortunately I haven't seen many videos of moving heads running with these sequences so all I have to work off is your guys feedback so anytime you're like oh this isn't working right um I had uh, Rodney and Audra recently, and they're like, oh, we're getting the flashes, and, and I'm pretty certain uh, it's because of this color wheel. Um, and because at the moment, you are going to get those flashes because the, the effect on effect is just coming on momentarily. So the color wheel is not going to have that time to set to the blue. Um, so the alternative there, like I said, is just set blue up here and, and just uh, before that effect starts and um, that should solve those problems. Uh, so hence the, the reason why I wanted to put this presentation together because I'm sure as we're coming towards showtime and people have got their moving heads up and, and have them going, there's going to be a dozen questions and I've been discovering these in you know through using them myself and other people and um the, the rest position is probably the biggest and the hardest one so if yours is not facing this way or the same way as the vendors you're gonna have work to do it's just it's, that is what it is at this stage i'm afraid um just don't let it get overly complicated um enjoy the lights for what they're doing and enjoy the experience of, of the moving heads. Because um, honestly, I think your crowd's just going to love to see those flashing lights and moving around. They're not going to care if it's not making a correct W shape or it's not falling in the right direction. And um, they're not going to have the slightest clue if it's lagging behind. Um, so I guess just at the end of the day, just don't let the moving head rule your show and be the main factor because it really shouldn't be. It, it's simply just another prop in your show that adds that different bit of element to it. And anytime you guys want, you're like, oh, you're really struggling with 
DMX values and curves and stuff like that. I get it. Like I've completely learned that myself in the last few months. Um, just feel free to send me a message and or say, hey, Ron, uh, is Daniel free? Can we use the Zoom room or something like that? I'm, I'm more than happy to jump on any time and step you guys through it. Um, you can share your layout with me and we can walk through what to change as well. Uh, there's the support always there. Um, I'm obviously in Australia, so the time zones may differ, but probably night time is the best of your time. But whenever I've got free time, I'll, I'm more than happy to jump on with you guys and we can go through it. Because they are a learning curve and not plug and play. Um, anyone that's got them needs to spend some time to understand them. And, and once you do, I mean, I've picked it up in a few months, so if I can pick it up, everyone else can. Um, I hope I'm not making them sound bad or anything like that. All I'm trying to do is say, hey, guys, these are the potential issues you may run into, but they're all fixable. You can change it to how you want and change it to suit your display. So there's some other considerations you need to be aware of with your moving heads because they're all different. Some moving heads automatically turn the lamp on when power is applied to the moving head. Uh, I found most of them do, but I have found recently a couple don't. So if you're finding your lamp's not coming on, then you're going to need to run a sequence to turn that lamp on. You, you uh, and in fact, um, a lot of the moving heads now also have a feature in them where you can set it so that the lamp comes on. Uh, so I, I actually recommend that. So I'll, I'll be powering my moving heads on, you know, five, 10 minutes before the show starts. Uh, it gets the lamp warm, warmed up and ready to go. Uh, it is recommended that you run, that you turn the lamp off at the end of your show and let it cool down for five minutes. Um, I've just been powering them off sometimes without turning them off. Uh, there's no issues, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, my show, after it finishes, I'll be running just a quick five second lamp off um, because who knows what's going to happen in the long term. Uh, the moving heads, most moving heads require a shutter or strobe effect to also turn them on. So to get a moving head on, you need two things. One's going to be the shutter on and the other is going to be a dimmer, obviously, when you want it on. Without one, it's it's not going to turn on and not going to let the light through. Uh, so there are some moving heads that have come out. I think Maddo's has one uh, that doesn't have the shutter. Uh, so you may find another vendor sequence doesn't have a, a the shutter strobe effect because they don't need it. Um, I don't know why they don't spend the five seconds to put one in and, and do it. But if you're finding, hey, I've got got this sequence and there's nothing coming on, um, you, you're probably going to find it's because they haven't either got, they haven't got the shutter effect on. I haven't touched base with sequencing. Um, I've probably made it sound more complicated than it needs to be, but they're actually quite simple to sequence once you get the hang of them, get an appreciation of how they're meant to move or what they're doing especially once you've got one hooked up, um, mess around and play with gobos and different colours and rotations. Some of the things you can do with them are pretty cool. Um, if you guys want to do a, a sequencing session, I'm more than happy to jump on one day. We can do another Zoom and, and go through, through it for an hour and um, we can set up a bit of a sequence. I've no intentions of doing all the sequences here. I just, I really don't have the time. And uh, if anyone else, wants to do them um, please please do because I'd really appreciate it and I'm sure everyone else with moving heads would appreciate it and I really do recommend you give it a crack and have a go and it's going to help you get more of an idea as well when you need to to sequence um, or map my pan effects to yours for example as well um, you, you may you may find I mean some simple things to do uh, you run out of time and you want to quickly get a, a sequence out to your audience because you love the song uh, and you press the time and you don't want to spend time on it. What you could do is just 
grab a, a pan, set it to the front 127, um, maybe set your, your heads to above your audience or wherever, like 30 on mine straight ahead. I might set it to 60 just above their head. And you could just get lazy and just go um, put a venue, uh, sorry, venue, a VU on the dimmer and just put it on a, on a timer. You could do like a, a pulse and set it to something like the beats. And, you know, if you're just after something quick and you just want that bang, bang, because you want a bit of a light coming out, you could just do that just to get something out of it. I mean, it's, not doing what the moving head was designed to do and, and move around and give that little bit extra flair. But you know what? You might just get some nice effects or or even throw a frost on and just get a bit of a floodlight going. Uh, so there's just a couple features there. Um, I hope I haven't spoke too long. Um, they're, so they're the main things I just wanted to point out to everyone. And that was... The rest positions, um, they're going to differ between people. If it's not the same as the vendors, you're going to have to change those pan values. If, you're, if you've got a negative value here, you may find your preview is different to mine. However, your actual moving head is probably going to be doing what mine is doing. Uh, and that's just a feature in this X lights. Um, how how you set these uh, degrees of rotation and is going to change what your pan values need to be. Uh, and once again, that all goes back to you needing to connect that moving head up, drop in a DMX value on the moving head and just adjusting it and seeing what works and where it needs to be. Because uh, otherwise, if you don't do that, you, you really are going to have headaches in the long run and you're just going to pull your hair out going, why is this not matching up and doing what it's doing? <clears throat> and it's probably the main reason why. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so with the colour, um, the Takata just come out. I had some beautiful colours in it uh, and to some cool beats, uh, some greens and blues. Uh, but after this, knowing this bug, I've actually changed it all to white. But you might just go, you know what, I want to do some green and blue. So just drop that on effect on and, and do it yourself. It, you know, it'll take you all of 30 seconds to do and, and you've got that colour. Uh, for my Takata, I've actually, because I've still got the colour wheel on, I've actually left the colours on, so I'm just going to put up with it not working correctly in X lights, but I'll know in the display itself it works. Um, and then, of course, you need that understanding that the wheel is going to take a bit of a split second to get to that colour. So if you see that flash, um, either change it all to white, um, add a colour on here, make it happen before the effect comes on, so it is basically warmed up in position, ready to go. Um, and that should solve that problem. So I hope this is, I don't know, there's probably not heaps of people here with moving heads, but for some that do, I hope this gives you guys a bit of insight of what you might be finding is not working for you. I know lag's a big one, the rest position's a big one, and colour may be a smaller one. Um, but hopefully you have some tools to correct that now. Uh, it really is going to be about changing these pan values and on the odd occasion, maybe a tilt that I find 99% of the time it's going to be the pan. Uh, and like I said, just yeah, reach out anytime. You guys can get me through Messenger. Uh, we'll, we'll jump on a Zoom together and, and, and walk through it. More than happy to help. That's about all I got for now. And and then if you guys want to do a sequencing one day and, and that, I'm happy to as well. And if you guys want to do a full layout, we can go through that and how to add a moving head in and all the different groupings. Uh, our groups are, are set differently to uh, one or two other vendors, unfortunately. Uh, they've just chosen a different way, but that's fine. Everyone does it their own. But um, this way seems to work really well. And, I feel like That's I've good. learned more about moving heads in an hour than I have in the last few years. I hope I haven't uh, talked too quickly and I'm 
Aussie accent might no. throw a few people off as well. Um, no, I don't. No, I don't think so. The question is, am I more anxious to want to use moving heads, or am I petrified to even try? Uh, I think it's like. I, I liken it to sequencing. I'm very comfortable and familiar with a lot of the steps needed to sequence and the effects and sort of what to expect from the value curves. But this really is a whole different thing because with effects, it's sort of WYSIWYG. You know, what you see is what you get. With this, yeah, there's a thanks. little more intricate intricacy with it, and especially with the, with the dynamics of all of the moving heads from the manufacturers being different. So I don't know... If you have a list or would recommend specific moving heads that are closer to what yours are or more standardized? Oh, I don't. And to be honest, I mean, I I picked up mine from a guy here in Australia who sold his display, so I got them for half price. Um, if I was to buy again, I'd probably try to find one with a, a higher speed. I think mine's going to be around 110-ish. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably prefer something around 150 um, I've tried to look on, I mean, there's so many different people selling them and I've, I've looked everywhere, but no one says the speed. So if you're looking at people are going to have to reach out and ask them what their speed is, but I'd be more inclined to look for the speed as one of the preferable items. Wow. Awesome. Um, hey, uh, well, folks, let's give you the opportunity to ask Daniel any questions. I'm going to leave this recording because you may ask a question that somebody has been wanting to know out there for some time. Yeah, and I'm sure it's sounding very overwhelming because I've tried to fit so much information into such a short time. Um, it's not scary. I'm purely just showing you guys and making awareness, hey, with the moving head, there's a little bit of work to do. Um, yeah. But you will find within a few hours of changing those values, it's going to come really quick. Once you've done one or two, the rest are going to come quick and it's going to be easier and easier to do. Right. Uh, well, like I said, just leave a lot of it. Like, honestly, yeah. unless it's straight out, you know, just leave a lot of it. So I was I was going to add something in with my experience of moving heads. One of the things someone recommended to me was is getting a DMX uh, control board like from Amazon so you could actually play with the what where your where your moving head would move, you know, based upon the 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 percentages, you know, like from zero to 255. So if you know if you know how it's laid yeah. out, you can set it up and then you know your preset defin definitions are like for like where it's centered in front of your house, you know, where the angles are that you need. And that way you can have it written down so you don't have to reevaluate that. Instead of playing with X lights and trying to make it work in X lights, like a $60 control board is probably the easiest thing to do because it will give you the value that you're, you're you know, where the pot's at. And like, yeah, you know, a lot more quick, absolutely. Quick yeah. yeah, the only values it's not going to get. And like I've used it sometimes and some other vendors use it is when you've got, you're not using the DMX effect. Um, like you're using an on or a bars or, um, yeah. you know, you, yeah, it's good to work out what those are meant to do because you can get some yeah, just, really cool effects from using like single strand and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I just, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, where just my values are because like mine, are, I don't mind, mine, mine are go vertical off the house. They go actually down and out. So I have a different, yeah. mine's different from what you guys would be doing with yours. Yeah, look, if you can get a board, I, I definitely recommend it because they're good fun to play with. And, and just yeah. exactly like you said, like those boards are, are 0 to 255, just like yeah. x lights. So you're going to quickly get that understanding and just go through and create that spreadsheet. Like yeah. write them all down because you don't want to keep going back, oh, which way is, what value do I need? 45, what way do I need this? You can just go, okay, Daniel's this one for straight ahead. So mine's this one, um, you know, and you make some adjustments from there. And that's what I've been doing with other people. Do you, well. do you know, do you know if x is going to put something out there to like give you like, so you can put in the value of like where your center is and stuff like that for like center? Uh, I'm not too sure. The only one I know that was worked on is the remapping of um, non-value curves. Okay. Uh, yeah, which will help quite a bit, um, hopefully. But I, I don't know how that's going to work yet. So I'm hoping Scott or someone else will put out yeah, a video. Yeah, I think I think the I think the, the moving heads are the next big thing. They're really going to really focus on just because people people are really starting to jump into those. Yeah, I mean we can see. I mean how many vendors are, are doing moving heads now? Um, yeah, there's heaps, and um, you can see people talking about moving heads all the time now. So. Once the displays are up, you know, Halloween and end of the year and everyone's showing off their displays of moving heads, I think a lot more people are going to go, oh, yeah, I want that too.
Yeah. Um, so I think I'm hoping the developers um, will add more features into it in the near future. I'd like to yeah. see, I mean, I don't know how hard it would be, but even just a frost where they turn it into perhaps the setting goes into like the floodlight. So you just get the round. So at least you have a visual representation of it is or Correct. using a prism. It might not need to rotate, but, you know, perhaps you could put out multiple beams or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, my movie has like three prism effect. So yeah. So, I with I'm, spinners. We so have I get the... I'm sorry. When you finish, we have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, any suggestions on using moving heads with color mixing like CMY? Uh, I don't even know what CMY is. Cyan magenta yellow, I'm assuming. Is it like a maybe like an RGB moving head as opposed to a lamp? Right. Or? Maybe Jeff, it's from Jeff Bamber. So Jeff, wh what do you mean by that, brother? Hey, I can quickly answer what a CMY is. It is cyan magenta yellow, by the way. <laughs> so is that just the three colors inside the head or yeah, yeah he's talking about screen. specifically color mixing so i'm i'm not sure what the, the use CMY is. is three different color wheels one color wheel is uh cyan one magenta one yellow That's okay how it mixes colors right um he's just gonna have to change like if if i have a color on there he's just gonna have to go okay Daniels is blue, the value is 20. Um, I'll use cyan, my value is 50, for example, and he's just going to need to change it to that color. Or just change it to white. Like, honestly, 99% of the sequences are going to be white because white's what's going to shine through the sky at nighttime. The colors obviously lose a lot in the darkness, so I, I tend not to use much color unless it's coming straight out. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I wouldn't get too concerned with the color and be more using white because it's going to have more impact. Cool. Any other questions out there? I was just going to back what Jonathan was saying about the DMX controller. So I bought the one that I put the link in, cost me $98. I, you know, 598 channels and whatnot. And also what it's help, helping me with too is chaining the devices so I can get the addresses correct and whatnot. But it also display it displays the values that I'm finding that the values it displays there. They um I have ten devices and they don't match what's in the most of the charts. So I have all the manufactured charts and they're not one hundred percent, especially with the gobos. And I like the gobos but they're becoming a pain in the butt. Sounds like that's a reoccurring theme with the uh, documentation that comes with the uh, the movers that they're not right. lining up. So that's yeah. why so that's why I bought that because then I can narrow it down to exact numbers and they seem to be pretty direct on. And what okay. Daniel's saying about what's front and what's back and left and right, there are five of these devices are from the same manufacturer and they're all different. Yeah, yeah. very cool. So Ted has posted a link for that. Uh, device in chat so you can click on the chat in the bottom part of your menu bar there and get to that link to see what he's talking about hey i bought one this uh today actually for 40 bucks it's supposed to do the exact same thing off of amazon yeah there's a, there's a lot of different ones but i picked this one because there were quite a few videos from people on how to use it and how to set it up mm -hmm. ditto it had a video to explain mm -hmm. it uh, I, I don't want something really expensive because uh, I just want something to piddle with the, the knobs and, and, and make the heads move around. I will have my four heads on Monday. Then, <laughs> nice. I, then, I'll, then I will talk more about it. Yeah. The sooner you can hook up a moving head and, and test it all, the better. Um, it's, the soon, you, you'll get your head around it really quickly. And once you do, the rest is all going to fall into place. I see somebody asked a question that I, I'd be interested in. You just turn the uh, light on for when your show is running, and at the end of the show, you turn it off, because if you don't, won't, that will put a lot of time on a bulb. Um, I, yeah, look, I think on the moving heads, from memory, there's two things. One's like a lamp on time, and one may be a bulb. I can't, can't remember if it's lamp or if it's on. So 
it's calculating both. I think the lamps are good for a couple thousand hours. So, you know, if you're only using it for three or four weeks, it's really not going to matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're about a hundred bucks to replace, but you know, a couple thousand hours, hopefully you're not having to replace any anyway. So I'll, I'll yeah, it's not a personal decision, but I'll be putting my lamp on just before the show starts and it won't turn off until the show ends. Um, just purely for the fact that I want to make sure it does come on when it needs to. I agree with you there. Hey, for some people, you can go in to look for used AV equipment if you want to look for some of the high end. And occasionally people sell the high end uh, moving heads. Some need repair, some don't. So you might, even, if you want to go up in scale, you can look in those groups. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, there's lots coming out. And um, I think we'll see a lot more vendors in the X-Lights community coming out with them too. So hopefully this prompts everyone to get into the DMX moving heads a bit more and we see more features come out and things making it easier. Um, but hopefully for now, it just highlights a couple of things you may find in your show if you've got them already and, and how you guys can fix them and deal with them. Nice. And and I honestly wouldn't recommend using them all the time. Uh, see some vendors and they've got them on the whole time. And it, I, I actually delete a lot of it because you've really taken away from that attraction of the rest of your show and you don't want it. You just want those beats and that nice little impact to, to go along. Explanation points. Show. I mean, yeah, I, I and I agree with you. I see that. And to me, it takes away from the show. Yeah. Now, granted, if you're doing mostly whole house effects, I, you know, I guess throw the whole kitchen sink at it. But um, if it if it takes you away from the sequence too much, then I think it's a, a nothing more than a distraction. It'll be an aha. But if you were to see that through every song, every yeah. sequence, I think it's going to be a huge. Uh, yeah, yeah, your entire show is going to get lost. Yeah. yeah but, I mean, like Ron, I mean, moving has are supposed to use sparingly just so as add extras in certain areas, not just run through a whole sequence. Yeah. Right. And, That's and you know what? If, if, if it's, you not, want, it's not always on feature. And if, if you want, just you could go into some of your sequences and you might just hear that that nice big bang and that impact in the, in a song. Like just put a correct an on effect on or or make a move down or something and, and that's all you, you need just for that, you know, one second I mean, here and there and it's well, really gonna highlight okay. your show. All right. Well, I mean, take for instance Disney and how they use moving heads in all their in all their big productions. They use them all the time, but they use them sparingly for effects to gather, not to not to not to wow you with, but just to kind of add effect into the castles. And stuff of that nature and a pull away and stuff it's it's done just in a way to just add to the add to the um uh, enhancement of the of the of the show it's kind yeah. of like adding a strobe yeah, yeah. correct yeah that, absolutely right and that that's the the whole point like some people are getting too carried away with them they're not correct. doing what they're meant to do and well just letting it get them down it's like no it's just it's an extra feature in your display just you know people are going to love it enjoy it don't I, I, th I think on it too much. I think D Daniel, what people get overwhelmed of how much they spent on the things. <laughs> well, I spent three grand. Like, you got to use them, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, how they, that's how they view it. I'm like, it's not the way it's meant to be. I mean, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Pink Floyd concert people. And I had no intention of putting moving heads in my display. I was very much not going to until these come up. And now you're hooked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can get some cheap ones out there, little ones that move around, and um, you they're not going to have bright big beams in the sky. But you could start messing around with a sixty dollars one, and it'll act like a bit of a strobe on that. But you can you can do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. With it. If you looked at SheHDS site, they've got some pretty decent. They've got a really wide selection of, of moving heads. No, I haven't. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ron, Daniel, thank you for present the presentation on this. You're welcome, Tom. Absolutely. And like yeah. I said, anytime reach out, guys. I I I love helping people out. And um, I don't know, I just have that bug for X lights and I really just have a bit of a passion for different sequences and what it can do. And it's become a hobby for me. Um, something I like to do in my off time and it almost takes me away from the rest of the world. So yeah, anytime you guys wanna want some help, just yell out. I'm I'm there. Fantastic. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for your time. This has really been hugely educational. 
And uh, I know a lot of people are going to watch this back to certain sections to uh, figure out uh, what you were doing at that point that I think is really going to help them out. So I look forward to getting this video out for the people that couldn't be here. And uh, again, thank you so much. Great presentation. That's my pleasure. Always. Thank you.